All right, guys. It is a cool, cloudy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is the third day of summer of 2023. That is Friday, June 23rd, 2023. And here comes the wet, bedraggled little dog. What have you been doing, you wet, bedraggled little dog? Anyway, it is a cool, rainy, a cool, rainy summer day here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this gloomy Friday afternoon. So, uh, <coughs> I know I'm supposed to be doing my Manga Bay Roundup rant, my ecological meltdown roundup. Maybe I'll get around to that later tonight, but uh, <coughs> sitting here going through my email, and I want to thank Lieutenant Tom from Vermont for sending me this straightforward Doomer Porn Chronicle of the Collapse showing up on Science alert. This is a science alert we have for the two or three people on the planet. I guess it was originally published in The Conversation, and this is by a fellow, uh, John Deering and colleagues. Uh, who is John Deering? Never heard of this man. John Deering is a professor of physical geography at the University of Southampton, and Gregory Cooper is the postdoctoral research fellow in social ecological resilience from the University of Sheffield, and Simon Wilcock is a professor of sustainability there you go, a professor of sustainability. Uh, that must be a uh, short syllabus in his uh, lecture circuit from Bangor University. And this is, this is kind of a recap of a much more detailed analysis uh, that was recently published in Nature Sustainability. So there's a link if you're one of these people who really wants to dig deep into the science and all of that and read all those big 50 cent words. You can read their original research in Nature Sustainability, but uh, we're going to go, we're going to trade in the 50 cent words for the 10 cent words. Take it away, John Deering and company. Global ecosystems risk collapsing decades before we predicted. Hmm. Across the world, rainforests are becoming savanna or farmland. Savanna is drying out and turning into desert. And icy tundra is thawing. Indeed, scientific studies have now recorded regime shifts regime shifts. We have a new term here in the Doomosphere. Regime shift like these in more than 20 different types of ecosystems where tipping points have been passed. Across the world, more than 20 percent of ecosystems are now in danger of shifting or collapsing into something different and they have all different links all through this story to more links to more links to more links. I mean, you can go down the collapsing ecosystem rabbit hole starting here. These collapses might happen sooner than you would think. Humans are already putting ecosystems under pressure in many different ways what we refer to as stresses, do you think so? And when you combine these stresses, you know, from humans, too many humans eating too much stuff, when you combine these stresses with an increase in climate-driven extreme weather, the date 
that these tipping points are crossed could be brought forward by as much as 80 percent. This means an ecosystem collapse that we might previously have expected to avoid until late this century could happen as soon as in the next few decades. That's the gloomy conclusion of our latest research published in Nature Sustainability. And I love this. So when uh, they went to look at the various stresses against the soon-to-be collapsing ecosystems across the planet, what is the number one stress? The number one stress against global ecosystems would be human population growth. Hallelujah. Human population growth, number one on the list, increased economic demands, and greenhouse gas concentrations put pressures on ecosystems and landscapes to supply food and maintain key services such as clean water. The number of extreme climate events is also increasing and will only get worse. What really worries us is that climate extremes could hit already stressed ecosystems, which in turn transfer new or heightened stresses to some other ecosystem and so on. This means one collapsing ecosystem could have a knock-on effect, a knock-on effect on neighboring e ecosystems through successive feedback loops, an ecological doom loop scenario with catastrophic consequences. And there we go. I love this. An ecological doom loop scenario with catastrophic consequences. Welcome to your world sooner than previously thought. Okay. So, how long until a collapse? How long? The big question. In our new research, we wanted to get a sense of the amount of stress that ecosystems can take before collapsing. We did this using models, computer programs that simulate how an ecosystem will work in the future and how it will react to changes in circumstances. We used two general ecological models representing forests and lake water quality and two location specific models representing the Chilaka Lagoon fishery in the eastern Indian state of Odisha and Easter Island in the Pacific Ocean. The latter two models both explicitly include interactions between human activities and the natural environment. The key characteristic of each model is the presence of feedback mechanisms which help to keep the system balanced and stable when stresses are sufficiently weak to be absorbed. For example, fishermen on Lake Chilica tend to prefer catching adult fish while the fish stock is abundant. So, as long as enough adults are left to breed, this can be stable. That must have been that professor of sustainability writing that paragraph. However, when stresses can no longer be absorbed, the ecosystem abruptly, abruptly passes a point of no return, the tipping point, and collapses. 
In Chilica, this might occur when fishermen increase the catch of juvenile fish during shortages, which further undermines the renewal of the fish stock. We used the software to model more than 70,000 different simulations. Across all four models, the combinations of stress and extreme events brought forward the date of a predicted tipping point by between 30% and 80%. This means an ecosystem, you know, that had been predicted to collapse in the 2090s owing to the creeping rise of a single source of stress such as global temperatures could in a worst case scenario collapse in the 2030s not the 2090s once we factor in other issues like extreme rainfall, pollution, or a sudden spike in natural resource use, can you say the, uh, the Green New Deal, you know, mining the planet to save the planet, a sudden spike in natural resource use which uh, is getting ready to go into overdrive as we save the planet from fossil fuels we will be adding one of the biggest stresses in history of humanity onto ecosystems all over the globe do your own math this is not rocket science <clears throat> Importantly, around 15% of ecosystem collapses in our simulations occurred as a result of new stresses or extreme events, while the main stress was kept constant. Again, can you say uh, increasing mining on this planet from anywhere from 300 to 1,000 percent over the next 30 years, we're going to introduce more new stresses <clears throat> onto ecosystems all over this planet. In other words, in other words, even if we believe we are managing ecosystems sustainably, is there anybody on the planet believing for one second, including a professor of sustainability, that humans anywhere on this planet are managing ecosystems sustainably? That again is a contradiction. In anyway, in other words, even if we are clueless morons who do believe we humans are managing ecosystems sustainably by keeping the main stress level constant. For example, by regulating fish catches, we had better keep an eye out for new stresses and extreme events. Bottom line, there are no ecological bailouts. Previous studies have suggested significant costs from going past tipping points and large ecosystems will kick in from the second half of this century onwards, but our findings suggest these costs could occur much sooner. We found the speed at which stress is applied is vital to understanding system collapse. Can you say the uh, the green, the bright green lies? This is the the most classic example uh, in the history of humanity. The speed at which the stress is applied is vital to understanding system collapse, which is probably relevant to non 
ecological systems also. Indeed, the increased speed of both news coverage and mobile banking processes has recently been in invoked as raising the risk of bank collapse. As the journalist Gillian Ted has observed, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank provided one horrifying lesson in how tech innovation can unexpectedly change finance. Recent flash crashes offer another. However, these are probably a small foretaste of the future of viral feedback loops. But there, the comparison between economic and ecological systems runs out. Banks can be saved, huh? as long as governments provide sufficient capital in bailouts, you know, by stealing it from the taxpayers. In contrast, no government can provide the immediate natural capital needed to restore a collapsed ecosystem. There is no way to restore collapsed ecosystems within any reasonable time frame. There are no ecological bailouts. In the financial vernacular, we will just have to take the hit. We will just have to take the hit. And we are getting ready to take the mega hit of all hits. The gloves are coming off. This planet is getting ready to take the hit. And uh, we will see how fast global ecosystems hit their tipping points and collapse. We will be chronicling it, and uh, so that's the big picture, and so uh, for the few people interested, later on we will look at the uh, roundup of little pictures in the ecological roundup from Manga Bay coming up some point this evening. So get out there and enjoy your global ecosystems before they take the hit. Are you saying bye guys already? Bye guys. Yes, you little wet dog. <laughs>